In his 2005 book, Democracy Matters, Dr. Cornell West describes three pillars for maintaining our great experiment in democracy. Pillar one, a commitment to Socratic questioning based in moral consistency. Pillar two, a commitment to prophetic justice where prophecy functions as revelation of the truth, like biblically. The third pillar, which artists, musicians, and writers are most responsible for, is a commitment to tragicomic hope. Tragicomic hope is the courage to stare adversity in the face and without falling into hopelessness or despair, we must respond creatively with what Dr. West calls a near tragic, near comic lyricism. For the last four years, I've been working on a series of paintings that slip between tragic and comic imagery. This cartoonish figure, trapped between backward and forward motion, beats a drum while looking against the lines of history. He is silly and frantic, manic and static. It's basically a self-portrait, you know. <laughs> so do you remember the beginning of the movie Punch Drunk Love? There's a peaceful street scene and then an SUV suddenly crashes like really loud, which is never referred to again for the rest of the movie. Um, and then out of nowhere, a van pulls up, drops off a piano in front of Adam Sandler and then peels off. Uh, this is both purposeful, tragic and comic. So let's begin with a simple question. These nationwide commercials, why are they so heartbreaking, right? Um, when I first saw Leslie Odom Jr. sing, I just thought it was like a beautiful song or something. But then he goes, nationwide, and I was like, oh man. Um, <laughs> see what you think. You have a side that planned, saved for a while, and soon you walk her down the aisle. A side that just wants oh, to so explore. Beautiful. But you're not sure that car can fit much more. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Okay, in full disclosure, I titled this lecture before I really knew an answer to the question. I still don't know. Um, what is it? Why is it so heartbreaking? Is it how sincere he is? I mean, I swear based on his performance and his voice and his singing, I think he cares more about insurance than Nationwide does. <laughs> Maybe it's the singers. Um, they're too talented to be doing stupid commercials. This is Tori Kelly in her nationwide merch. Did you know she was on American Idol, but Simon said her voice was annoying? Um, she came to fame doing covers of Jeff Buckley's cover of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah on YouTube. That's kind of a heavy song. Um, I asked my students what they thought, but they didn't think these videos were all that sad. I thought, of course, that's it. These commercials are made specifically for me. I'm 40, I pack the car full of bags too. <laughs> but that doesn't really make them sad, you know? Maybe it's like, um, because I thought it was like a cool song. But then he goes nationwide and I was like, oh, it's a jingle, you know? Um, this is Brad Paisley and some football star. Okay, in their merch. And they're literally arguing about whether it's a song or a jingle. So that theory is bunked. And like, what's up with this uh, unplugged live studio aesthetic, right? You have like a singer, a warm out of focus background, and the back head of some dude playing guitar. Um, it's also from Guns N' Roses Patience, another thing that somebody my age would recognize immediately. Isn't that crazy? But hold up, Guns N' Roses didn't invent this unplugged aesthetic. Yeah, we gotta go all the way back to the 68 comeback special. Elvis Presley, another artist who kinda came to fame doing essentially covers. Um, also, Peyton Manning slide, check. Elvis Presley slide, check. <laughs> I see you, Tennessee. So, why? Why is it so sad to me? Perhaps it's because he believes, like he's a real believer. I want to say even that I think this makes the commercials really good. I mean, they are really good. Like, he believes so much he doesn't need to act or think or try hard. He just sings. You have a side that wants to impress. Careful, man, you're making a mess. A side that opens up a store doing more than ever before. That's why there's nationwide. They help to know, protect, and grow your many sides. Oh, I can barely stand. <laughs> well, I mean, I wanted to. Maybe I even planned <laughs> to end the lecture with something about you doing your research in a way that is devoted and sincere, and that you should proceed with such commitment and such conviction that, yes, even you can be like a nationwide commercial. 
But I can't end it like that. Instead, I'd like to encourage you to be sad. That's right, my lecture is a little sneaky. It's about being sad. It's about listening to when you're sad and asking difficult questions. The most important research we're conducting right now might have something to do with who, why, and how we are. That's the examined life, right, B? What makes you feel safe? What makes you laugh? How do you feel and how do you feel? Answers to these questions need not be a laundry list of things that need to change, not at all. We need only to listen and respond creatively. The questions were written in silence. The courage of the play is to speak them. I'm still searching. This video's still sad to me. There's some small piece of it, some small kernel, that resists my, resists my attempts to symbolically academicize it. Some piece of it that cannot be theoretically explained away. Some piece of it that still demands my attention. Ultimately, this is what art can do. It can pose questions that do not seek answers. It can give us an opportunity to just search, to observe oneself observing, to feel oneself feeling, to practice listening. And if you uh, get frustrated asking questions and all of this feeling your feelings and things aren't working out and you're stuck and you've lost all your energy, your direction, your pursuit and your pride, remember, <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs>